a lot of us are very concerned about the media like they did with the, the run up to the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. Just getting behind the president because missiles are in the air. We wrap ourselves in the flag, nobody wants to be unpatriotic. And we're just in the beginning of what could become a larger conflict or it could fizzle out. We don't exactly know, but we did have one night of media response to the strikes in Syria. So first, let's show Fareed Zakaria and then I'm gonna go into what might be the this most disgusting video I've ever seen about US military action. But first, here is Fareed Zakaria on what this moment represents for Trump. What changed last night? I think Donald Trump became President of the United States. I think this was actually a big moment because um, candidate Trump had said that he would never get involved in the Syrian civil war. He told President Obama, you cannot do this without the authorization of Congress. He seemed unconcerned with global norms. President Trump recognized that the President of the United States does have to act to enforce international norms, does have to have this broader moral and, and political purpose. I think that what is interesting is even the way in which he justified uh, his actions, President Trump did. For the first time really as president, he talked about international norms, international rules, about America's role in enforcing justice in the world. It was the kind of rhetoric that we have come to expect from American presidents since Harry Truman. But it was the kind of rhetoric that President Trump had pointedly never used, either on the campaign trail, nor in his inaugural. So. I think there has been an interesting morphing and a kind of education of Donald Trump. Wow. So, so look, he hadn't been president before, but he becomes president because he used to say categorically, tweet after tweet after tweet, don't go into Syria. And now that he's in power, he does, which seems to me that he didn't become president, he became a hypocrite. But for some reason, for free, that makes sense. But then also, he used to like not care about international norms, and now he does. <laughs> what about fucking national norms? He's supposed to get authorization for the use of military force against a foreign government, and he just completely ignored that. So I, I don't there's understand no what UN any Fareed Zakari is saying there. There's no UN resolution to bomb. Yeah, there's the UN is pissed. Yeah, but there's but no they haven't concluded anything. Right. So basically, he's starting a war uh, yeah. on a hunch without a hunch, investigation a or without a UN resolution. That is not a nat, nat, uh, international norm, Fareed. You have that a hundred percent wrong. But he did become. You don't become president until you uh, exercise power in the in, at the behest of the military industrial complex. And it's so exactly. weird that the same people who screamed at me that. Donald Tonahan's Trump is a maniac and he's unhinged and you can't let him be commander in chief are now cheering his starting a war. They're cheering, not only that, but they were shaming him if he wasn't gonna do something. You better go do a war. So that just shows you how crazy the establishment media is, the establishment politicians are, and how crazy the conventional wisdom is going on right now. It feels exactly like the run up to the Iraq war to me right now. The, the, the just blatant gaslighting of the American public, the blatant taking the government at its word and all is just so wrong. But if that video bothered you, oh, I saw this one. Wait until you get a load of this one. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two US Navy vessels in the Eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Um, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments making what is for them a brief flight over to this airfield. What did they hit? You could. You could comment and say they're terrifying or terrible, like in the classic sense, like they, they inspire ter beautiful, beautiful. First of all, I was looking at that footage, it wasn't beautiful, like objectively, as a guy who does videography and pictures, it's not beautiful. Um, but those are killing people, like they go up in the air and then eventually they hit the ground and they kill people there. That's what they're made to do. They're not beautiful. It's, it's, what yeah, is he talking he, about there? Even his military expert, who's largely brought on by mainstream media to say war is awesome. Had to say, well, yeah, they're, I guess they're beautiful, Brian, but remember, they do kill people, they're there for destruction. So even like the military was like, yeah. God, that's kind of ugly. <laughs> and so, look. Maybe uh, I thought they were fireworks. Yeah, no, 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 but I want to. There's a football I, no, game. <laughs> no, guys, but he goes further than that, okay? Uh, I'm not at all surprised that he said that because I saw the pictures that the Pentagon released, and they were purposely done in a way that was artistic. I'm not kidding. You saw like the light and they had one where it framed the American flag. And the reason they released those pictures and those videos is not an accident. They wanted the media to say, 
Oh, what a beautiful war. Now, they didn't think he was gonna actually literally say they wanted to, them to imply it, to talk about the, the valor and the glory and the honor, and those are the code words you're supposed to use. But Brian Williams, because he likes to be poetic, was just like, no, just call it beautiful, right? Yeah. I'll do exactly what the Pentagon propaganda was aimed for me to do. So that's what's more disturbing about, about his reaction in the well, entire media. Right? I mean, it's just what, it's what Jimmy said. It's true, it, it's uh, Fareed Zakara, it's that rah rah, like now you're president, you bombed somebody. And look at how beautiful the bombs are. I mean that, yeah. but you know something, it works, that's the problem. It works, it sells, it, you, you were right. They have people who know how to make it look artistic, know how to make it look patriotic. But you know something, that sells. When they talk about a picture being worth a thousand words, people see that image and they're like, we're doing the right thing. They don't need to hear any logic behind it, any long-term effects, the reasons, any you know collusion with the red. They don't want to hear any of that. They see a beautiful big ass bomb going toward the enemy with an American flag behind it, and they stand up and salute. And and that's and and I'm not saying the people are are wrong. I'm saying that the people in who use these images know how to use these images to manipulate people's thoughts. Yeah. So they've been they've been, you know, again, we we sit here, we analyze this stuff, we have time to, we read it, we get into it. Most people don't, like you were talking about. Most people are walking past the restaurant and they see a TV screen. No kidding. Or they have two, you know what I mean? So yep. they they they're just like, oh, well yeah, that yeah, that looks like uh -huh. what we're supposed to be doing. And it, it's so hard to fault people for being that simple because they're being manipulated by experts. So yeah. I'll just tell you the difference between MSNBC, CNN, and say Al Jazeera is MSNBC shows the bombs taking off and Al Jazeera shows you when they land. Mm. And that would be the difference with our pro-war establishment media and another outside view of what we're actually doing. So they never show you what happens when our bombs blow up and kill babies. We just killed 150 uh, civilians, which we told to stay in their houses, and then we bombed them in Raqqa. So uh, yeah, that's the difference between those two things. And let's remember, Brian Williams um, worked for General Electric all the way through the Iraq war. And he used to bring on generals onto his show that were being paid by defense contractors. And he said the generals were giving us the straight dope on what was happening in Iraq. When we found out that those generals are actually on the payroll of defense contractors and what they were doing was coming on to lobby for more war and manufacture consent among the American people so we could keep doing more war. The guy who told us about that won a, a, a Pulitzer Prize for it. Brian Williams still never told his audience that those guys he brought on as impartial experts were on the take. So that was a much worse lie than whatever helicopter he was on yes. that he got in so much trouble for. And so to, to Jimmy's point about the bombs landing, if A, the American government wanted to, or B, if there was any reporters in the mainstream media, they can, you know, nine civilians were killed in our strikes, in our strikes. They can go show the nine dead civilian bodies and then go, does that look beautiful? But they choose not to do that. They choose to show you the pictures and the videos that the Pentagon sent them for propaganda. And they choose not to show the, the results of our bombings. Now they choose to show you the dead civilians when we think Syria did it. So that doesn't mean that it's Syria doing it is okay. We What we want you to do is get the full picture. And then, and then by the way, at that point, it's not like the answers are easy. So uh, I hate, what Assad has done in Syria, I think it's horrific. I, I w wish there was a way to stop it. I'm not sure that us getting involved is the right answer. But let's at least have an honest conversation about it. Mm. Showing these pictures and showing how we're the, on, I mean, what did Fareed say? He said, now finally, we're back to enforcing justice in the world. Oh, oh my come God. on. Come back to on. when were we ever enforcing justice in the world? Were we enforcing justice in Vietnam? Were we enforcing justice in Iraq, in Libya, in Afghanistan, in Syria, in Honduras, in the banana wars? Where, where are we enforcing justice? We're doing probably we limited are, parts of World War II. Limited parts of and Marshall Plan. Not all of it. We are using <laughs> our military force at the behest of corporations like we always have. And we're trying to steal natural resources from indigenous people. And that's exactly what's going on. And nobody ever asked the question, did Farid ever 
asked the question, why is there a war in Syria in the first place? Why are we even there? Why do we care? We care because they're trying to put a natural gas pipeline through Syria, and that's gonna upset the apple cart with Russia, and that's why Russia doesn't want Assad to be overthrown, and that's why he's sticking up for him. That's a big reason why he's sticking up for him, because Russia's economy is about selling fossil fuels to Europe. Qatar and Saudi Arabia wants that to go through. The petrodollar, the United States says, Saudi Arabia, anything you want us to do, we do, which is why we still sell them cluster bombs that they're using on the poorest people in the world in Yemen. Nobody shows a picture of those people who get killed by cluster bombs, which we manufacture in the United States, which most of the world considers a war crime. We manufacture them, sell them to Saudi Arabia, they drop them in fishing villages in Yemen, and they kill 90% of the people killed by cluster bombs are civilians. You never see that picture. Yeah, so just I can't help but double down on, on the Yemen story. It, our allies, Saudi Arabia, are massacring civilians in Yemen. The United Nations is actually an honest actor in that case and goes, those are war crimes, they shouldn't do that. Yet, almost no pictures, not almost, I haven't seen any None, pictures not one. of well, all the civilians and the beautiful babies dying in what Yemen. What about the eight-year-old girl Trump killed in his raid? What yeah, about the 26 is, civilians who got killed? What about that? Go ahead. That is what every war is about, what you said. Every war is about land and natural resources. That's what a war. That's that's what a war is about. Either we're, we're taking, you know, one country's taking it away from another, another country's protecting theirs, or whatever they want to expand their control. They, again, the civilians, as sad as it is, are always the pawns. The yeah. civilians will always be the pawns, and sadly, be the victims of any war. I mean, you, that's. Can, can yeah, I just read one more? It's quote horrible, but it's re, it's reality. One more. Is it yeah, okay? General Smedley Budler, which was the most decorated uh, <clears throat> military guy when he retired, wrote this in 1935, and he was a veteran of the Banana Wars. And he said, "It is possible the it is possibly the war is a racket. It is possibly the oldest, easily the most profitable, surely the most vicious. It is the only one international in scope. It's the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. A racket is best described, I believe, as something that is not." what it seems to be to the majority of people. Only a small inside group knows what it's really about. It is conducted for the benefit of the very few at the expense of the very many. Out of war, a few people make huge fortunes. That's a general who wrote that in 1935. So, uh, and finally, look, for me, it's not personal. Uh, I think Fareed Zakaria is a, a relatively to very smart guy. I think Brian Williams is a really decent guy and he was decent to me when I was very briefly at MSNBC and, and he came on the Young Turks when he didn't have to when we first started. So it's not personal and these are generally speaking good guys. But what they don't know, and I know that it's gonna bother them greatly to hear it, but it is, I've gotta say, cuz it's true, is that they were selected to say absurd things on TV. There's 330 million people in the country. You could have picked Jimmy Dore to go on NBC. You could have picked a lot of people to go on. You could have picked Noam Chomsky. You could have picked Glenn Greenwald. You could have picked someone neutral. You could have picked someone who was going to do analysis. They chose Brian Williams because they know he'd say that those were beautiful pictures. They choose Fried Zachariah to go on there because they think here's a guy who sounds really smart and who's going to tell us about the education mm. of Donald Trump. And that if you were educated, you would know that doing further bombing and starting more wars is us enforcing justice <laughs> in the world. And so that's why they were selected to go on there and tell us pretty little lies. Mm. So now, they, in the old days, that's all they had and that's all the media we had and it would have worked. But I think that they are overplaying their hands and I think they are underestimating the internet and I think the, on the internet right now is circulating, wait a minute, I don't think that makes any sense at all. And I think there's something wrong with these guys. In fact, the minute Brian Williams said those are beautiful pictures, it, it already erupted online. People screaming like, no, you monster, don't call that beautiful, you're killing people at the end of those things. Now again, I don't think Brian Williams is a monster, but I think the facade of television and how it has been used as pro-American, pro-Pentagon, pro-war propaganda for decades after decades uh, is now finally at an end. Not that they're at an end of doing it, but that they're at the end of getting away with it. And I think the rest of us clearly see the game that's being played. Young Turks now has over six billion lifetime views. You know who did that? You did that. We're now larger than CNN, ABC, you name a news network online, we're larger than them. And you built all that as everyone scoffed and didn't believe. And here we are, guys, thanks to you. Build independent media together with us at tytnetwork.com 
slash join.